Well, good afternoon and welcome back to Locomotive Systems Training. Uh, <clears throat> as I promised you, we uh, are going to a whole different area here for the FRA rules. Anyway, we're going to the FRA Brake System Safety. That's on a whole new section, part 30, 232 of the FRA rule book. And the name is rather lengthy, but let's talk about it. It's Brake System Safety Standards for Freight and Other Non-Passenger Trains and Equipment End of Train Devices. Definitions. Remember, I was talking about the definitions first, Section A, and this is LSTV-025. All right. <clears throat> Part 232, this is the scope of what this uh, the rule is all about. It says here, this part prescribes federal safety standards for freight and other non-passenger train brake systems and equipment. Subpart E of this part prescribes safe, federal safety standards not only for freight and other non-passenger train brake systems and equipment, but also for passenger train brake systems. So it actually covers both uh, freight trains as well as passenger trains. This part does not restrict a railroad from adopting or enforcing additional or more stringent requirements not inconsistent with this part. So this is the minimum FRA standards that uh, the railroads have to meet. If the railroads want to have even more stringent than the FRA, well, that statement right there sort of says they have that right to go ahead and do that. Okay? And sometimes the railroads will make their standards even more stringent than what the FRA calls for. All right, so let's take a look. Definitions 232.5. Okay, air brake. And that's what we're talking about in this section, which is a completely different subject. Remember that whole, and it seemed to be quite a bit, and it was quite a bit, uh, with the FRA portion in the first, we dealt strictly with anything below the running board. Remember that? I told you the, the critical eye on that is anything below that running board can have, have horrible effects on the operation of that train and railroad and public safety and employee safety. So we're going to leave the rest of that alone for now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about air brakes. Now, I don't need to impress upon you the importance of air brakes and the proper functioning of it because what good's a freight train if you get it running and then you can't stop it? So, in fact, that's even more important stopping it than even starting it, okay? So, let's take a look at some definitions. <clears throat> air brake means a combination of devices operated by compressed air, arranged in a system and controlled either manually, electrically, electronically, or pneumatically by means of which the motion of a railroad or car or locomotive is retarded or arrested. That's known as air brakes. And there's oh, all kinds of air brake systems out there. Let's see, there's number 6, 24RL, 26L, there's 30A, CDW, there's, uh, there's uh, Epic 1, Epic 2, uh, Fast Brake, uh, so there's CCB26, there's CCB1, CCB2, there's lots of them out there, which everything I've described is listed here in the, the generic term, either either manually or electrically or electronically or pneumatically. So there's a lot of systems out there that the railroads use. Airflow indication, AFM means a specific airflow indicator required by the airflow method of qualifying train air brakes, AFM, airflow method, or airflow, airflow method. The AFM airflow indicator is a calibrated, and that's key point, airflow measuring device which is clearly visible and legible in daylight and darkness from the engineer's normal operating position. That's AFM. It's a gauge that's located next to the other two air gauges on the control stand if it's equipped with that type of system. <clears throat> bind. Uh, bind means to restrict the intended movement of one or more brake system components by reduced clearance, by obstruction, or by increased friction. Now, when you think of bind, putting something in a bind could be a brake lever could be a lateral restraint rod in a truck assembly. It could be a swing, a, a, a brake lever. It could be a brake pivot arm. It could be um, uh, the brake head. It could be a lot of different things. Everything has the operators intended. Everything that has to ha that's designed to have free movement has to have free and un unbound, if you will, uh, movement. If it's something binds up, then that becomes a violation of federal law. All right, let's go to the next one. Brake dynamic, or what we call in the field dynamic braking, means a train braking system whereby the kinetic energy of a moving train is used to generate electric current at the locomotive traction motors, which is then dissipated through resistor grids or into the catenary or third rail system. <clears throat> a lot of railroads have dynamic brake lo type locomotives. Uh, there's basically two types, of air, uh, two types of braking systems on most locomotives. One is pneumatic brakes, whether it be electronic, or pneumatic, I use the term pneumatic brakes because the final product is taking, putting air in a cylinder 
and, and doing do mechanical rods and levers, and then a, a, a brake shoe being pressed up against the wheel to either slow, slow down or stop that wheel from rotating. Okay, dynamic braking is an is a electrical type system. What we do, we have those big traction motors, which we've already talked about in previous uh, FRA videos. And what we do is take that traction motor and take it from a turn it from a motor <clears throat> into an actual generator. And what happens is, as that locomotive descends the hill or goes down the hill, the the operator, the engineer, will take that locomotive and put it in dynamic braking. And what that does that the, the, the traction motors become, like I said, generators, and they will actually self-generate a current, which creates a retarding force throughout that locomotive, or con locomotive consist, and that will slow down or pull back or hold back that train up to a certain point uh, with dynamic braking. Very, very, back in the early days it wasn't that great, but through the years they made major breakthroughs with uh, uh, dynamic braking systems, both EMD and GE, also with uh, extended range dynamic braking, which is about eh, somewhere around 18, 20 miles an hour, down to almost, if not zero miles an hour. So it's a very good system. Uh, you, you either wind up in dynamic braking or use pneumatic braking, one or the other. Brake effective, or effective brake means a brake that is capable of producing its anomaly design retarding force on the train. A car's air brakes is not considered effective if it is not capable of producing its normally designed retarding force. And what that means is, whatever that brake, braking force is of that car, say like when it's brand new, or during its normal service duty, that's what it has to have. If it's something is wrong, something is defective, something's not operating properly, and that normally designed retarding force is reduced, then that is not an effective brake, and that would be written up as such. <clears throat> A uh, handbrake or hand brake hand handbrake means a brake that can be applied or released. And the key word here, ladies and gentlemen, is by hand to prevent or retard the movement of a locomotive. Now, what that means is you have several different types of hand brakes. Uh, the key word is is the word hand. It's, you use your hand to either turn a wheel to tighten it, turn a wheel to loosen the brake, uh, or a ratcheting type lever that will apply the brake, and then a release lever that will release the brake application. But what it means, a handbrake is something that is done with your hands. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. Brake indicator means a device which indicates the brake application range and indicates whether brakes are applied and released. You'll notice here, this is kind of a cool picture here, is we have, we have three gauges. Okay, the gauge on the left uh, is what they call a duplex gauge. This is what they call analog, which means it has needles. If it was digital, it'd have numbers. Okay, but this is an analog gauge, and there's a red needle and there's a white needle in the left gauge. There's a red needle and a white needle in the middle gauge, and there's kind of a white needle with a red tip on the right. And let me explain what those are. The gauge on the left, uh, the, red, the red needle indicates main reservoir. Most locomotives and most railroads run anywhere between 130 and 140 pounds of main reservoir pressure for that brake system, indicated by the red arrow. The white needle on the left it represents equalizing reservoir. Equalizing reservoir is a controlling uh, air pressure for an, for an air signal in the air brake system, and that's normally set on freight locomotives to 90 pounds. Okay, on passenger trains, that equalizing reservoir would be at 110. Uh, the, the middle gauge, or the gauge to the right of the, the first one, there is uh, the red needle would be called brake cylinder. That's our final product of the air brake system. We would watch that needle to find out where that, where the, whatever you move your handles, you're supposed to have a desired or predictable outcome. And that red needle would represent how much pressure is actually in that brake cylinder, pushing that cylinder out of the piston out, which eventually applies all through all the rods, levers, and beams, which actually provides a, a, a braking and retarding force of that shoe against the wheel. And that's measured in pounds per square inch. The white needle on the right is, um, is for brake pipe, <clears throat> and that's normally set at 90 PSI. When we set the equalizing reservoir on the left, that automatically, or pneumatically, sets the brake pipe on the right. And one of the rules of air brakes is uh, brake pipe always follows equalizing reservoir, except when you're in an emergency. Uh, so if equalizing at 90, brake pipes at 90. If equalizing drops to 65, brake pipe would do the same, and so on and so forth. Okay. But anyway, these are indications. The, a the AFM, or the airflow indicator, measures the amount, and it gets a little bit tricky here, but let me just, for the sake of throwing it out there, this indicates main reservoir flowing into the brake pipe. Okay, and it's measured in CFM, that's cubic feet per minute. Okay, uh, this actually measures that airflow in cubic feet going through from main reservoir into the brake pipe. 
This is the gauge we were talking about just a moment ago that uses a gauge for indication of the state of charge of the train line or brake pipe. <clears throat> brake inoperative or an operative brake means a primary brake that for any reason no longer applies releases as intended. And the key word there, <clears throat> excuse me, as intended. When the airbrake system is new or if the airbrake system is working properly, then it does its job. If I have wind up with pressures that are less than what I would call for here, that would be a inoperative brake. Uh, if my brake cylinder pressure doesn't go up to say 72 pounds when I apply the independent brake, it only goes to 45. I either may have a defect or I have a different type of braking system that I need to be aware of, but that's down the road, okay? Uh, let's see, brake inoperative dynamic or inoperative dynamic brake means a dynamic brake, which we talked about earlier, that for any reason no longer provides a design retarding force in the train. So if I have a three locomotives and one or two out of the three, the dynamic braking, the dynamic braking system isn't working, that becomes a major no-no and that becomes a federal defect and you write it up to get it fixed. <clears throat> Parking brake, or brake parking. Uh, parking brake means a brake that can be applied by other means other than by hand. There's a big difference between a hand brake, which means you use your hands, and a parking brake, which you do not use your hands. Uh, you don't provide any mechanical force to either apply or release it. This uses something else, which we'll talk about that. It means a brake that can be applied by means of other than by hand, such as by a spring, hydraulic, or air pressure when the brake pipe air is depleted or by an electrical motor. Okay, uh, the newer locomotives, uh, the early SD70s, they came out with an electronic or electric parking brake. Uh, GE came out with something similar. Uh, you push a button and the wheel would either just turn itself or the brakes would just apply. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a parking brake uh, as the name implies. And parking brake, we use that to do what? If the locomotive is not moving, we apply the parking brake to hold it in that position. Okay, however, the parking brake is not used in lieu of the air brake system. Okay, so first stop in the train, we want to make sure that all the brakes are applied from that first locomotive, clear that last car, and then we can also apply the parking brake if, you know, if the operating rule states so. <clears throat> all right, let's go to the next one. Brake pipe means a system for, of piping, including branch pipes, angle cocks, cutout cocks, dirt collectors, hoses, and hose coupling used for connecting locomotives and all railroad cars for the passage of compressed air. Now, I, I always get marveled, even after 40 years of being in the railroad industry, I'll look at a train go down the track and I will literally in my mind look at that lead locomotive and then follow that train all the way down to that last car or back in the old days the caboose which we don't have cabooses anymore we have EOTs or end of train devices uh, what we would do there is the I would really look and from that locomotive lead locomotive through the other locomotives through the first car the 125th car clear back to that 150th car we are running brake pipe air the entire length of that train because brake pipe air, in and of itself, is, is an air signal for the locomotive operation and the car operation of automatic brakes that run the length of the train. <clears throat> primary brake, or brake primary, means those comp components of the train brake system necessary to stop the train within the signal spacing distance without thermal damage to friction braking surfaces. This is very important from the standpoint that when we apply the brakes, they're engineered and be designed to not to prevent thermal damage uh, uh, from, from, from occurring. We don't want hot wheels, we don't want hot braking components. The system is designed to stop it in the appropriate distance without creating those thermal problems, okay? Uh, secondary brake or brake secondary means those components of the train brake system which develop supplemental brake retarding forces that is not needed to stop the train within the signal spacing distance or to prevent thermal damage to the wheels. And again, we're looking here to prevent what? Thermal damage to our wheels. It's an additional, and it says right here, supplemental braking system. Okay? Not the primary, but it's an additional one. All right. <clears throat> Go to the next one here. We have ECP means electronically controlled pneumatic. Okay? That's, that's the latest and greatest thing out there in the market. When applied to a brake system. Now, back in traditional locomotives, we've got them running all over the, all over the world, if you will, that currently today, they run off a pneumatic signal, which I just mentioned is brake pipe here. Now, this is really kind of cool because you still have brake pipe that runs from the lead locomotive all the way to that 150th car down there, but no longer is that brake pipe here used as a pneumatic signal. Mm -mm. The ECP, the electronically controlled, is an actual wire 
that goes from that lead locomotive to all the trailing locomotives through that first box car all the way to that last box car. So instead of a pneumatic signal going from lead locomotive to that 150th car, we now have an electronic signal which works much, 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 much faster. I believe it's the speed of light and write in or call me and let me know if I got that right. I think it's like 186 miles per second. I could be wrong, but let me know. Anyway, so the application and all the releases on that lead locomotive and trailing locomotives in every car is done electronically. Much, much faster, much more responsive, much more reactive, less stress on all the uh, 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 air brake components. And the, that means a much greater value. And uh, it's a really, really great system. Um, but time will tell when this gets, when this, uh, uh, gets, gets used out there in the field. It is used out there in the field in some, some uh, railroads, but, but not all of them. Okay. ECB brake system means a train power braking system actuated by compressed air and controlled by, and there it is, electronic signals from the locomotive or ECP EOT, which is end of train device, to the cars in the consist for service and emergency applications in which the brake pipe is used to provide a constant supply of compressed air to the reservoirs on each car, but does not convey braking signals to the car. Remember, conventional air brake system, the brake pipe is used to charge the cars and also used as an air signal to apply brakes and release brakes. On ECP brakes, the brake pipe air is used strictly to charge up reservoirs on each car. It does not convey the braking signals anymore. That's done up here by electronic signal. Big, big difference. Okay? Emergency application means an irretrievable brake application resulting in the maximum retarding force available from the train braking system. Okay, when we move that automatic brake valve from release and recharge and we go boom all the way into the emergency position, what we're stating there is we want the maximum braking application, not only the locomotives but the entire train, to stop that train as rapidly as possible without locking up the brakes and creating that thermal damage that we talked about on the previous slide. Okay, so our heaviest when I say irretrievable, it means once you, once you start an emergency application, you're not stopping it until that train is stopped. Okay? All right. Move on. Foul means any condition which restricts the intended movement of one or more brake system components because the component is snagged, entangled, or twisted. Again, it's kind of like buying, but yet it's still completely different, is that uh, we obviously have some kind of a damage going on. We have interference going on. There's some something interfering with our braking, our brake rigging system, a lever, uh, a rod, a beam, a lateral restraint rod, uh, uh, a wear pad, anything that is worn away or bent or twisted or snagged would be considered to be foul, and that in and of itself becomes a federal defect. Freight car means a vehicle designed to carry freight or railroad personnel by rail and a vehicle designed for use in a work or wreck train or other non-passenger train. That's a freight car. It's a revenue, it's a revenue type vehicle. In other words, a Bosch car, a flat car, a gondola car, a tank car. We're taking product from one location to the next location. Okay, that's a freight car. Locomotive means a piece of railroad on-track equipment other than higher rail, specialized maintenance, or other similar equipment which may consist of one or more units operated from a single control stand. I can run a locomotive, as it says here, there's no S on the end, single locomotive. I can pull cars wherever I want to do it, and sometimes we do that. But most times, the railroad industry, they'll deal with what they call an MU or multiple unit or locomotives. It might be two, might be three, might be six, might be ten. Uh, locomotives all MU are coupled together. They're all controlled from a lead locomotive and everything, whatever the leader does, all the trailer, train locomotives will follow it. Okay? So, and that's how most railroads operate. They'll run what they call MU locomotives. Two units here, or if they have distributed power, they'll have like two units in the front, two units in the middle, two units in the back, all controlled from the front. But a locomotive is a non revenue component, meaning that you don't put two by fours or a car on there or anything else. It's strictly for pulling freight vehicles or freight cars. Okay? Okay, moving right along. Locomotive cab means that portion of the superstructure designed to be occupied by the crew operating the locomotive. Here's kind of a nice little, neat little picture of a locomotive cab. Very clean, very pristine. Uh, it has a place for the engineer to sit in front of the control stand. He's got a whole array of, of indications, indications and equipment here to help them operate that, that locomotive throttle, dynamic braking, pneumatic braking, uh, speedometer control, uh, environmental control, sun visors, windows, floor, everything. 
Okay? Uh, and usually there's two seats on this side of the picture that you're not seeing right here. Uh, one for the, for the uh, conductor and or brakeman or however many personnel are used to operate that train. <coughs> locomotive controlling or controlling locomotive means the locomotive from which the engineer exercises control over the train. Now remember, how many, how many different locomotives are in charge of that train? One and only one, and that is lead locomotive. Okay? Or in this case, we call it the controlling locomotive. Okay, and that, ladies and gentlemen, puts us to the end of this uh, little video. And again, this is the FRA website. You go to www.fra.dot.gov, and also I'd like you to take a look at our own website. It's lst-ca.com. Once again, that's lst-ca.com. Thank you, and have a safe day.